Hey everybody, BrickLover18 here today with another episode of Ask Brick here on the Friday Answered Questions. Lots of great questions tonight, so stay tuned. Decorate your room with this handmade wall decal of the evolution of the Lego minifigure. These decals from Be A Creative Designer look great and come in a large variety of colors and sizes. Check the link in the description to learn more, as well as don't forget to watch the review video I've made of this decal. Subscribe to BrickLover18 for more daily Lego videos. So let's start right off into the question. Maniac Turkey asked, What is your technique for finding the best price for Lego parts and figures online and offline? This is a really tricky question and I'm probably not the best person to answer for this because I have a horrible time trying to find deals on Lego parts and minifigures and things like that. Online what I try and look for is like Kijiji or American Craigslist ads where people who are just trying to get rid of their Lego collections or Lego parts that don't really know what they're doing with Lego like they just see a plastic let's try and sell it for $10 and really this is a $200 set. That's where I find a lot of my really good deals like I just bought the Minecraft Enderman set for $30 which was retail 45 so I paid less than retail for that so that was a good deal for me. In the stores I just kind of look in the Walmart clearance section because I only have a Walmart near me. Toys R Us like never ever discounts anything where I live and that's pretty much it. In the states when I go to the states I go to the normal Lego aisle and I just look for anything with like a red tag or anything like that because the states has so much better Lego sales than we do here in Canada. I don't really do a lot of Lego shopping online as I mentioned, just Kijiji and stuff like that. So I check your local listings first. That's where I've gotten some good deals. 3FIM2, how do I get people to go to my channel without asking in the YouTuber's comment section? So this is a good question because I was wondering this myself not more than two, like not more than one month ago. I really want to expand my channel. Like what I'm doing is I'm making these daily Lego videos with a lot of unique Lego content. Like a lot of people aren't making the same videos that I'm making. So I really wanted to get my channel exposed to that. And But again, I don't want to be a spammer. But I also don't mind when people message me like, hey, this is what I do. I, okay, I shouldn't say I don't mind. Sometimes it gets a little annoying when somebody messages me when I can't read part of their message because it's so spelling and grammar. Like... The, the spelling is just so bad, it's atrocious grammar, and hey, can you uh, check out my channel? And I think that's what they're asking, but that's annoying. But if somebody really professionally emailed me and said, hey, this is what I do on my channel, I was really wondering if you could check it out, I gladly checked them out. So that's what I started to do. Instead of just went, going to everybody's section and commenting, like, hey, check out my channel, I would go to people's videos and, you know, maybe see if they're like what kind of video they like if they really I maybe email them I know a lot of people think like oh you shouldn't do this but it got me some really good subscribers that continually watch my video and I say right in the email like I'm not trying to be annoying or spam you so if you don't want to receive emails from me ever again like just don't even respond to this one or respond and tell me never like I don't want to be annoying at all but I've had some people subscribe to me and they're like wow your videos are awesome I'm really glad you reached out to me and I'm like, and they've been very happy, so that made me feel good. So I guess it's whatever you feel comfortable doing. Another thing I do is I like to watch a lot of people's videos, and I like to interact with their videos, but not to the point where I'm annoying. Like, I would just like to say, if I see a cool video, I'm going to let them know. You know what, that was a cool video. And then people will start to see my channel on more than one other channel and be like, oh, I'm going to check him out because he watches a lot of LEGO. Maybe he likes the same things I like, so maybe he'll upload the same kind of videos. But again, like I try not to be annoying, I just comment here and there. I don't comment seven comments on every single video I see, only ones that interest me. Zika Gaming asked, how do you get money from doing YouTube and how? So what I do to get money for YouTube is I monetize my videos. So that's a big thing and monetize your videos means Google, you have Google put ads on the front of your videos, in your videos, like on the sides of your videos on YouTube and things like that so there's just ads all over your video and what happens is people watch these ads, the companies pay for these ads and then YouTube and Google pays me 55% I think of what the ad revenue brings in. Another way I make money on YouTube is for doing in-video advertisements from companies that produce Lego related product. Like as you saw at the start of this video I actually have a company be a creative designer they make a custom like minifigure evolution decal so I had them advertising in this video and they pay me 10 cents per hundred subscribers I have like 
It's right in the description of the comments, I believe, so I'm not afraid of disclosing the numbers. And so that's and that's about three dollars and forty cents an ad when you when they actually purchase the ads. Now it would be three dollars and seventy cents an ad. And anybody can buy these. Like even if you're a very small channel that just wants to expand your views, you know, three dollars and seventy cents and I will create you an ad. You don't even have to give me an ad. I will completely create you an ad and voice over it and put it on my videos and that does seem to get a lot of reach for the businesses and they really like that. That's just another thing I added just because Google AdWords doesn't pay a lot of money and you can't control how much money you make from Google AdWords so someday they could just decide to pay you really well and other days decide to pay you really crappy so I just did this in video ads because I can control how much I make I can control how much I charge and I control the companies that put on but I do do both just because one is always going to be there if I have an advertiser lined up and the other is always going to be there because sometimes I don't always have advertisers lined up. Now I think that was like a three minute answer. I'm sorry for that. Ask Brick, can you do a Lego minifigure series 15 blind bag opening? Yes, I, I really want to do minifigure openings but they never get very many views, but that's not going to stop me from making videos because I make them for my enjoyment and I like opening minifigures on camera. And as soon as I find some Series 15 minifigures, I'll definitely open them up. And I make it sound like, oh, I can't find them anywhere. I truthfully haven't looked. I have not been to a store since the, about the 3rd, I think, of January. I've not been to Walmart since then, so I'm really lucky. I don't have to go very often. I'm never half an hour away. That's where I go to school. That's where our Walmart is. But I just go to school, come home. I never go to the Walmart, and I never check for minifigures, which is just as well because I'd end up spending a lot of money on them, so it's kind of good. So the final question of the night is from 3FN2. How much is it to send a parcel and is there a good way to avoid pain? So I had to clarify this with him just to make sure what he wanted. But every postal rates are different for every single country in the world, for every different place, and sometimes even different provinces and territories. So what I recommend doing is go to your post office and ask for one of their little papers that says all the rates with the dimensions and things like that. I know for Canada, here's what I do and I'm going to show you now. In the United States, this concept is completely different, but in Canada, here's how it is. So when I take a bubble mailer in Canada, in the States, it can be at whatever thickness as long as it's under a certain weight. That's fine for the States, but in Canada, it actually has to fit through this little slot right here for it to go the cheaper oversized package way. So as you can see, when I put the envelope in, there's not very much room for other Lego parts in it. So for example, this part would go through the two centimeter slot, absolutely no problem. But this part, this wheelchair, would not go through the two centimeter slot. And when it doesn't go through the two centimeter lots, I actually have this post office price. So if it fits through two centimeters and it's under 100 grams, it costs 245 in Canada. But if it doesn't fit through the two centimeter slots and it's going to Canada, what I have to do is I have to completely pack the package. Then I have to go online, weigh it and measure it and stuff like that. And it completely depends on the dimensions of the package. My guess, something like this would cost $15 to ship here in Canada. But in the States, they, you know, they could ship it for five or six, I'm pretty sure. Anywhere, I don't know about that, their prices exactly, but because they don't have to deal with thickness. But here in Canada, we have to deal with this thickness. So it's very difficult sometimes when we're trying to pack packages and a lot of people don't understand what we're meaning by that. Like the States, we do have to like weigh packages. As you can see, bubble mailers only take up nine grams and as long as it's under 100 grams, we can ship it for the cheaper price. And luckily for us, a lot of Lego is not very, unless you buy a lot of Lego, most of it, a majority is under 100 grams. So a lot of my Canadian orders that are under two centimeters go for the cheaper price. But as soon as they're higher than two centimeters and two centimeters isn't a lot, all of a sudden they're $15 plus. So as I mentioned, like go to your post office, ask them for the little sheet with all the prices. That's how I made my sheet of prices based off their sheet of prices. So they'll gladly help you out and answer any questions you have. My post office ladies were very considerate the first couple months when I was doing it because I didn't know what I was doing. Another thing I did that I don't recommend doing because it takes up a lot of spare time is go to the post office with every single package you have 
and say, how much, how much is this going to cost? I had to stop doing that because the post office people were driving me absolutely insane. I'd go in the morning when the good employee was working, and I want to rephrase that. They're all very nice employees, but one of them just... Ooh. Anyway, so I'd go in the morning when the one employee was working and she'd give me like the dollar eighty-five price, say that. But then I'd go back in the afternoon when the other employee is working and she'd say, Oh, this package can't go like oversized letter because there's more than just paper in it. So for customs reasons and blah 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 it has to ship for seven dollars. And that was driving me nuts because in the morning they would ship it for a dollar eighty, but in the afternoon they'd ship it for seven dollars when there was absolutely no reason whatsoever. Thanks everybody so much for watching this episode of Ask Brick. I'm really sorry this episode was so long, but I felt like telling stories tonight, so that's exactly what I did. Thanks everybody for watching, and let me know if you enjoyed this, if you liked how the fact that it went a lot longer, but I told some awesome stories. I'd like to hear your response down below, if anybody's still even watching this video. Thanks again, have a great day.